I'm going to go ahead and just kick this mm -hmm. off and welcome everybody to today's session, which is called Transform Your Thoughts to Transform Your Life. My name is Jennifer Norman. I am the founder of the Human Beauty Movement. We're also known as the HBM. Now, we are all about the beauty of becoming. It's that continuous growth, the continuous learning, that continuous unfolding of our truest, most beautiful selves um, that I think is, is so critical and paramount for us to have support. You know, it's something that I think that it's, it's harder to do on our own. It's wonderful to have people around us that can help cheer us on and provide some guidance and we can do the same. So I wanna thank everybody for being here, for showing up for yourself and being part of the movement. I'm so honored to introduce you to Tanu Ajha Singh. Tenu is a certified spiritual life coach, certified mindful meditation coach, a trained hypnotherapist, and radical healer. She believes awareness is the first step towards healing, and so she helps people shed past baggage and unlearn all that is not serving them anymore so they become happier and more able to thrive in life. So welcome, Tenu. I am going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you so much. I am so honored and I'm so happy to be here. Uh, especially I feel that, you know, when you have good intentions and uh, intentions to make people aware about how they can actually change their life through their thoughts, it becomes more and more purposeful and meaningful. And I'm so thankful that you joined the hand with me and you said, okay, let's come together and let's do something very beautiful together. So thank you so much, guys, for joining in. My name is Sanu, as Jennifer said. So today's workshop is all going to be about your thoughts, feelings, emotions, patterns, but I'm not going to make it like boring because I know these topics can be very, very heavy. So I would like to first of all, do a little meditation just to collect our energy so that we are all here present and now, because that's very, very, very important. When you are present and now, you are able to receive better, your receptivity is much uh, better and you are able to grasp as much as your mind allows you. That's how I can say. So if you uh, feel comfortable, you guys can close your eyes. And let's take a few deep, long breaths in through your nose and uh, out through your mouth. If you want to sigh, like deep sigh, just relax. And mentally tell to yourself three times as you're breathing in and out, relax, relax, and relax. And allow yourself to breathe out any stress. Breathe out any tension. Breathe out any kind of energies, any kind of thoughts, any kind of stress which you are carrying or you were carrying till the moment. Just let it go through your breath. And now come back to your normal breath. And start focusing on your breath. Just see how your breath is moving. Just observe the rhythm how it's going in and out. Just normal rhythm of inhale and exhale. Normal rhythm, rhythm of being in this life, in this beautiful moment. And inhale lots of love. Inhale lots of kindness. Inhale lots of awareness. Inhale lots of Blessings. Inhale lots of compassion for yourself and others. Allow yourself to connect with your higher self, the supreme resources and the energies. And just allow yourself to feel the warmth of these beautiful energies. And get back to yourself and slowly and gradually open your eyes when you are ready to.
open your eyes with a big, broad, beautiful smile. Beautiful. How are we feeling? Good. Nice reset. That's nice. That's what I wanted to do. All right. <clears throat> so as I asked earlier, has anybody done any kind of workshop or programs or any kind of stuff where <clears throat> they have been given some kind of knowledge or wisdom related to mind, how it works? How sweet, Jason. Thank you so much. <clears throat> how it works and uh, how we carry certain things throughout our life. It can be yes, it can be no. It's all good. Yeah, I can jump in. Um, yeah, sure. M multiple new age thinkers, whether it be Louise Hay, Wayne Dyer, uh, mm. the, of course, like Wayne uh, Ram Das, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, um, and then um, I could list a whole bunch of twelve step programs too. Beautiful. That's nice. That's beautiful because I also listen to them. Apart from doing the courses, I just invest my time uh, listening to their podcast. And it's it's actually very transforming. It's very life-changing sometimes because even a sentence can make so much sense to you. Isn't it? Just one sentence. And you'll be like, oh, that's my aha moment. Isn't it? Oh, beautiful. That's nice. Yes, of course, there are heroes. <laughs> All right. So I want to ask you one thing. I'm going to ask you, how do you, how do you guys feel about yourself? If I ask you to write a sentence that I am, so what will be the next finishing sentence? I am, fill in the blanks, what? Grateful, okay. Oh, okay, often seeking too much validation from others. Okay, here we come. Awareness, okay, that's good, that's a good one. <laughs> Carl took your answer, <laughs> beautiful. I am a survivor. I would like to be a thriver. That's beautiful, Celeste. That's that's beautiful. Yep. So, why do you think that this is the this is the first thing which came in your mind? Because this is what you actually feel in yourself, in your body, in your mind every day, isn't it? So imagine if your thought instead of having the gratefulness, the awareness, the, uh, you know, the, the instinct of being a survivor. If it was like, I am not good enough, I am unwanted, nobody loves me. What do you think how that thought would have affected your life? Any idea? Well, I would say like that thought probably uh, began at an early age. So a lot mm -hmm. of that stress and negative self-talk has compounded over the years. Uh, so exactly. it's stronger now more than ever, unfortunately. Beautiful. You have just hit the exact point what I'm now going to start saying. All right. So what happens is our thought creates our emotions, right? So first you have a thought. You will, If the thought is positive, you will feel positive about yourself. You will be happy. You will be excited. You will be energetic. You will be like, oh my God, I can go and win the whole world, right? And you will feel, yes, I am good enough. I can do this. I can do that. I, I'm a success person. I'm a very successful person. I'm an abundant person. I know how to do the things. I am going to achieve whatever I think of. Right? But if the thought is, oh my God, I don't know how to do this. So your mind says there is a dilemma and confusion. Right? And when the thought says there is a dilemma and confusion, of course, it converts into feelings and emotions. And if the feelings and emotions are heavy or they are very intense and the critical filter of the mind is not able to process what will happen, it will start getting into your energies and energies will start manifesting the same situation, circumstances and people around you who will make you feel that you are always in confusion. You don't know how to do the things correctly, isn't it? Have you ever thought about it? Because whatever we are thinking, Somehow the whole world is projecting and reflecting the same thing about us. I'll tell you from my own experience. I was a journalist. I was a journalist for almost a decade. And I left that job because I was unfulfilled. I was unsatisfied. I was like, you know what? You, I know I'm serving people, but I'm not sure if I want to serve people being a journalist. There is some bigger picture which I want to achieve. But... My thought patterns about myself was, I am not good enough. It was so hard for me to look into the mirror and appreciate myself 
and accept myself and embrace myself and see myself as who I am and what I am without any conditions. There was so much labeling. Oh my God, I'm wearing specs. I don't like myself. I'm, you know, not looking good. And what was happening during that time, I was actually not taking proper care of myself. I never cared how I'm looking. I never cared what I'm eating. I never cared how am I feeling. So if I'm not taking care of myself, do you think anybody around me will put me on their priority and will take my take care of me? No. Why? Because the thought pattern is telling me that there is something off and we need to figure that thing out. And most of the time, because we are not aware about these patterns, these thoughts, we keep attracting the same thing and we keep doing the same thing and we keep ending being in the same loop. Sometimes, God forbid, it doesn't happen to anybody. Sometimes some people are having this thing for their whole life and they don't know what to do about it. They don't know what to do about it, right? So again, I'm going to repeat it. Our thoughts create our, uh, our feelings. Feelings creates our emotions. Emotions creates our energies, which is the most important aspect of manifesting anything we have in our life. So I'll give you a small example. Imagine a kid who is three or four years of age, right? And he has won an essay competition or maybe a drawing competition or singing competition, dance competition, anything in the school, maybe a spelling test. He's just three or four year old, but that's a big achievement for him, isn't it? And he comes home and he tries to tell things to her mom, but mom is busy. She's in a meeting or she's somewhere and she's like, okay, baby, I'll, I'll get back to you. Let me finish this work. So the child is holding himself. Oh, I have to tell her, but the excitement is going down. Slowly it's getting like, okay, I don't have anybody to say things to, right? Or share my win to. Okay, after some time, the father enters the house Father is on phone. He is already late for his conference because he said, okay, I'll be working from home for half of the day. He's running to dad. Dad, I really want to say something to you. This is what I achieved. And he's like, yeah, yeah okay, okay. I'll, I'll see you in, the late, in, in a bit. And he's off to the meeting again. Second time, what happened? The child felt ignored, neglected, unseen, unheard, unattentive, right? The same thing happened when after he saw that, okay, now my mom is free, I'll go and tell her about my achievement and she will validate me, she will give me the appreciation, she will hug me, maybe she will give me some something, you know, to celebrate, we will do something. But now mom has got free from the office and now she wants to cook and do other things and she's like, yeah, maybe I'll come to you. Just hold on for a second. Again, the baby is waiting. And can you imagine, it, it takes only three experiences to develop any belief and conditionings you have. You tell me what conditions or uh, what beliefs or conditionings must that baby must have felt? What, what can be his statement of I am? What? Can you do that for me? Yeah, I'm probably feeling unworthy. Unworthy, yes. And unheard and not appreciated, of course. Not good enough. Not good enough, definitely. Not important. Yep. So imagine if this thing is happening over a period of time when people are telling you you can't do this correctly you are so clumsy why why i have to yell at you only then you do the things you know you don't understand what i'm saying and it's a normal sentence in every house household this happens right but imagine how the brain of a child of a kid adapt these things and perceive these things and how they run their whole life like this so you can understand the power of thoughts, the power of words are so, so, so important. And the second part is the experiences we hold as a child, the beliefs we have in ourselves as a child, those are the seeds we have for ourselves also because we start believing those things that, okay, yeah, I am not good enough. I am not worthy. I am unwanted. I am not loved. So what happens? If you are carrying a pattern of I am unworthy or I'm not good enough and, and uh, nobody loves me, you will keep attracting partners who will never give you the attention, 
who will never love you who will keep uh, uh, you know mirroring yourself that you are not good enough and i know we cannot change the past we cannot change the uh, uh, other people you know because they are who they are like let's be real they are who they are we cannot change them but i feel as an adult when we come to a certain stage when we come to certain age and especially if we are willing to change ourselves and if we are in the awareness of what it is that okay i see there is something there is something which is missing i have money i have name i have fame i have job i have everything but still i am not happy that is the point where you need to address to sit with yourself that okay how am i feeling about myself because whatever i am feeling about myself is the core issue and that's what is bothering so unless you start addressing those those issue those things will keep coming back to you right so next thing what happens is when we figure out our thoughts feelings emotions and energies because even energetically you will feel like you know what i don't feel like doing anything i feel so dull i don't want to go outside my house you know i just feel like sitting watching tv i am no more creative i am no more able to do the things which i love to do how many of you still do the things for yourself when like when you were kids what were your favorite hobbies and are these hobbies still with you or they are all vanished it's funny because i was just thinking about this the other day about how when i was younger i used to do so much art and mm-hmm. i always think of myself as being kind of like a um, a stifled artist and i'm like i really wish that i could paint some more and for whatever reason that's like life gets in the way and mm-hmm. you end up putting that on hold you end up putting a lot of the things that felt like they were part of your identity to the side yeah, yeah. so that's why i'm asking you how many of you still hold those hobbies with you how do you how many of you still is carrying those you know that that happy moment within you like every day you are doing something for yourself how many of you do that does anyone do that please feel share, uh, feel free to share those things because those things really matter i do like i really like skiing unfortunately that seasonal but i'd say like when it's hiking i'm going to like always appreciate like the smell of flowers or like mm. the touch of trees and i can like hone in on that all the time and that's something that i always did as a kid just like that playful like oops i stepped in a puddle again and like <laughs> and being excited about that beautiful do you do it even as an adult when you walk go outside and walk maybe just going for a coffee or something and you just suddenly stop and, oh my god there is a butterfly because that's what i do mm-hmm, like i'm absolutely. like oh my god this is a butterfly that i love that right just mm-hmm. stand on the balcony just feel the breeze because you know as a kid when we are born we are whole and complete we are whole and complete our energies are aligned our mind body spirit everything is so aligned but as we start creating the critical filter of our mind we start you know seeing like okay our environment tells us what to do how to do when to do they tell us who to be right then the peer group starts happening then the family then the educators you know the teachers and then we grow up and then all the conditioning starts happening over there and then the fragmentation also starts happening the soul energies get shattered okay no this is not working this is working because critical filter is like always constantly uh, dwelling between right wrong what is good what is not and that's how we start developing our own uh, uh, views and thoughts and beliefs and thinkings because we have been bombarded with so many things that okay you are this you are not this and we get confused who exactly we are and by the time we come to that stage where we want to know we are all, already an adult and some people think that oh my god i have spent whole my life now there is no point of learning anything maybe let it be what it is but some people say no even at the age of 50 i want to find who i am and i want to pursue that thing. and that is the difference some people take this initiation i did when i was 28 i left my job i was like mm, this is not working <laughs> and people were like oh my god you're a journalist this is such a powerful job you have so many connections you have name fame everything and what are you doing to yourself i'm like mm, this is not giving me satisfaction and i just switched i'm not telling anybody to switch any career but i'm just telling you how i felt and how aligning with myself was so 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 important 
It's so nice that this group um, is very intimate. Thank you. And it seems, yeah, and it also seems like everybody is is quite advanced as far as your um, knowledge of this. this yeah, I really love that. I and, really love that. And the thing that I think trips us all up, and I think that it, it because it is it is a lifelong journey, is just continuously reminding and getting it ingrained into ourselves to stop those like uh, those thoughts that get in the way, to stop yes. those things that like that that voice or that script that goes on in Correct. the mind, because it is so entrenched in many cases in in our thinking. I know. Jason, you were sharing how like sometimes you're asking for validation or seeking validation externally. That was my life story. Oh my God. I mean, I felt like crushed if somebody was like, oh, you don't really look so yourself today. It's like, you know, I'm like, oh my God, you know, I just wanted to die. I know. Um, I was like that too. Yeah. Or if, you know, you, you didn't get a, you know, you did a great job at work or you're know, like, it was like a, a criticism. It was just like, you just felt like everything was falling apart. And so a lot of it is in the practice or it's in the reminding ourselves and those, and it's beyond affirmations because affirmations won't work if you don't believe them. It's like, That's how so do you convince yourself deep down in your soul, deep down in your complete belief system, like through every ounce and fiber of you that you're worthy that you are going to manifest everything that you want in your life that you know you want and, and you are the master of your destiny that you don't wish for dreams come true you make them come true but a lot of times we are filled with self-doubt because we're seeing the present moment we're seeing like well I don't really you know the you know, I don't have that validation yet. I don't have enough reps to prove that I'm good enough. That's true. Um, that's true. And so, you know, that's why I think these kinds of gatherings are important because it's okay. That is totally human. It's totally yeah. understandable. And it's not something to continuously <clears throat> beat ourselves up over um, because we, we tend to do that too, don't we? How many of you yeah. like either in chat or on the screen can raise your hand, um, you know, have, had that in your background where there's either negative self-talk or you're beating yourself up or there's some sort of a script maybe from that you can trace back to either childhood or even something that might be in your professional life your personal life at this moment where you're feeling like uh I, I just don't feel so secure in myself right now. And I need to regain that confidence in myself again. Does anybody relate to that? Yeah, Ashandra. I'm thank sure you. many of us, I'm sure. Yeah, I think that it's it's so relatable, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, th I think that a lot of people are like, you know, we it, it, it's in the ether. We know that we're in this place where we're, we're responsible for raising that vibration of the, of, 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 of the earth. And, and your presence here is proving that you care enough about yourself to continuously improve, to continuously make those changes, sure. to sure. remind yourself of all of the badassery that you have within you. And so we are here to just kind of remind you of what that, you know, what those, what the process is to start out with as Tenyu has just described, you know, how it, how it happens. And then we want to take this opportunity in this session to have those transformations. We wanna be able to have you think for a moment about your journey thus far, what is it? And I'm sure that all, if you're like me, there's probably a million different things that you're hoping to achieve. But if there was one priority in your life about something that was either an unlim, you know, or a self-limiting belief, mm -hmm. or something that you're grappling with that you feel is a block, we all have blocks. But what is that block that is that? tends to hold you back right now what is that single most important thing feel free to write it down you don't have to share it if you don't wish to because sometimes you know that expresses that to the universe but if you can if you can think about what that is if you can gain clarity or if you want to talk through it with us we would be more than happy to help you work through that because we are here we want to build transformation we're a small enough group that we can you know this is sacred this is this this is a safe space safe space for everybody to share right um 
if anybody is wishes to have some work done and, and feels comfortable enough um, sharing out loud, then, then we can do that at this moment. If not, then we can do it more generally. I'll just take a moment for anybody who wants to. Yeah, it's just dropped in the, in the chat there, just that this idea that we losing that playfulness as a kid and that innocence uh, and wonder and awe uh, and then having to like oh, find that job, make a difference in the world. You can change the world. It's up to you. And mm -hmm. then uh, make sure that you earn enough money so that you can get the rent, pay the AT and T bill. Uh, yeah. Then, then life gets got a little bit so so serious. Serious. And then, yes. Um, play got switched. Uh, I mean, I I play by cooking in the kitchen. Like that's mm -hmm. kind of that's where my creativity comes out. But. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that's kind of where where I'm at. Is to, maybe I, I'm wanting to uh, invite myself to be a little bit more unprofessional, more childish, more authentic, um, and maybe people are holding. If I'm holding myself, or anyone is holding me in that particular way, then maybe I need to let them go gently and yeah. kindly. Mm. <laughs> See, there are a lot of steps, like a lot of things which I would like to say over here, because you know what? The subconscious mind is almost 6,000 times more powerful than our conscious mind. Mm -hmm. So whatever you are carrying in your subconscious mind, that's that's what reflect in your life. That's what reflect and you also attract from people around you. Mm -hmm. And the critical filter of the mind is directly connected with your uh, self, your subconscious mind. So if the critical filter of the mind is so bombarded with thoughts which you don't want the beliefs which you don't want the conditions which are not serving you anymore of mm -hmm. course that is going to affect you it's like your eyes are blurry it's mm -hmm. like there is a lot of cloud and you are not able to see anything so the first first thing i would suggest is to clear the crit uh, critical filter mind you can say when you have the fogginess in your brain or you you know when you start zoning out or when you say that okay i'm feeling a little lost here why? Because your brain is tired. Too much of information is going in and brain has its own way of processing the thoughts. Especially you must have noticed that when you are in a negative thought or which is very unpleasant or very, very uneasy or uncomfortable to you, you, you tend to feel very tired because your brain is feeling tired and that's how your body starts feeling tired. Because there is so much in my plate and I'm not able to take care of each and every aspect of those things. That's why I'm feeling tired. And then sometimes you feel like, oh, you know what? I have so much stuff to do, but I'm not feeling like doing anything. And you end up not doing anything. Yeah. I, right? also, want, I also want to address Carl because I I so okay. can relate to that what he was saying me. about um, taking the expectation of either oh. parents or society and the idea of what is professional um, because it's been ingrained in us that, you know, what the quote unquote professional person looks like, sounds like, talks like, all of those things. And, and certainly um, it doesn't resonate with a lot of people anymore. Right. It's, um, and we live in a time where Thankfully, people are being more open to the idea that our school system failed us. It told us that we had to take a certain, like take tests a certain way and prepare us for college and do all these things in order to like move up the ladder. And it turns out that, you know what? A lot of those people who have done all of those steps are miserable. You know, they are just so unhappy. They, they work, you know, they worked for companies felt like cogs in a wheel and didn't have that sense of fulfillment. Um, and you strike me as a as as an an energy, Carl, that wants to be almost like that artist within, like the like you are so expressive, and you are just being um, like harangued by these voices that you care so much because you're an empathetic soul and you care what they say, but you shouldn't. <laughs> And, and, you know, we, none of us should care, but it's so hard. And I think that that's also something that everybody here is probably used to. It's like the opinions of everybody else saying like, well, I wish that you were like this. I wish that you were like that. Jason, you were saying your parents think that you're still a child yes. or you still yeah. act like a kid. And they probably wish that, 
that you were a different way. My mom used to say, I wish that, you know, for about me that I was a, a different way as well. And, and that's, that leads, leaves us feeling like guilty and that we have to like manipulate ourselves to be something that we're not really deep down inside. We feel like we want to have this freedom. We want to have this ability to explore and express and truly I think about some of those people um, out in the world who have kind of like not given a shit, so pardon my French, but, and, and look at that, like they're, they're like the best musicians, they're probably like the, be <laughs> the you know, like the, the, the best fashion designer, like they, they probably have gotten to a place where they feel like they've been able to express themselves to the umpteenth ability um, in a way that can take constructive feedback, but that doesn't let that define who they are. They say, I'm calling the shots. This is like me. I am like, you know, I have something to say. I know Anastasia is, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. You were like, you know, my public speaking is like, you know, continue just like letting your voice shine, feeling like you can be so perfectly you. And, and even if it's not quite right it's like it's it you can kind of tap into that excitement energy rather than that nervous energy that kind of makes us feel timid and small when we're trying to get up on stage or get in front of people and and, and talk um so yeah I feel like those are the things that you know I just want I, like we we want to remind ourselves constantly and continuously that a lot of times when we we hear this feedback and we're like, oh, and you know, you should be making more money than you are, you know, and we're like, oh my God, maybe they're right. And so it makes us doubt ourselves because we're seeing what's happening now. And sometimes we don't realize that if we just keep going through and if we just continue believing in ourselves, then the universe will provide for us. We start doubting the universe. <laughs> we start doubting what's what's really, you know, our birthright to come before us because, you know, there's, and, and that's, I think the lesson is that um, to transform your thoughts is not an easy thing. It really isn't. It's kind of like having those beliefs, having those, those deep seated beliefs, like you, you know, you are a badass. You are the conveyance of all of this greatness that is yet to come and you're just in this process of continuing to become That's and so okay. yeah maybe we can you know continue saying that to ourselves is like I am continuing to become I am in this place where it's not about faking it till you make it I mean I don't believe in faking it till you make it it's kind of like I am going to be until I become it I am going right. to be exactly that person that I I really believe in myself. And I'm going to say, sorry, mom and dad, I love you, but this is my life and this is how I want to live. You're going to say, you know what? I may not be the best orator. I may not be the best public speaker, but I have something so important to say. I am really, <laughs> really excited. And they'll feel that out of you. They'll feel your heart. And That's it true. doesn't have to be perfect. And it, actually, it's probably better that you're not because it gets boring if you're perfect, right? It feels like, oh, it's so produced. That's so true. if you have that rawness that is really you and you're speaking authentically, then you just get excited about being a vessel, being a channel of all of the things that you know you you are there to share. I remember that I was working for this company and there was this girl, this woman who was a, a makeup artist and she um, was so good in front of the camera. And I was never as good at that time. I was never as good as she was and just being able to explain and describe and get people excited. And I was like, how is it that you do that? And she's just <laughs> like, I, you know, she, she's just like, I just see myself as a tool. I see myself as being, you know, a, a channel for, you know, this, this idea or what I need to say. And I'm just the voice that gets to do it. And so she kind of takes her ego out of the equation, which is neat. And I really learned a lot from, from that moment to be like, yeah, it's not about me. It's about the message. And that really right. kind of helped when I started to do more speaking out in, out in public. And um, maybe that, that might be a little bit of a tip for you, Anastasia, hopefully. Yeah. 
I would also like to ask Carl and uh, Jason and uh, Anastasia because, so for example, Carl is saying people want him to be more professional, right? Do you want to be a professional person? Mm -hmm. Does your heart allows, does your heart aligns with that thought where you want to be in a professional person? I've been the career transition to become a chaplain, mm -hmm. which is just meeting people in their humanity. Mm -hmm. which is finding the beauty and the imperfection. Mm -hmm. um, life and death situations possibly have to uh, lose an arm or a leg or, you know, there's a diagnosis. And so I don't, it's just, it's my new line of work where it's, um, I, I'm enjoying like that, that imperfection, but then uh, loving in and around that and making difficult uh, Find, still finding love and un un unconditional mm -hmm. feelings uh, around mm -hmm. uh, some of the hardest parts of people's lives and, and, and situations and what their family has to go through as well. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about that? I feel great. Like this is now my calling. It's like all that mess in my 20s and 30s of trying to be corporate this, that, the other. And um, then uh, now being... Um, kind of now directed and guided into this, I feel like it's finally, I'm in alignment of where I am, what I'd like to do in a, in a calling. But uh, boy- Did you hear yourself a, what you just said? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm finally in alignment of finally what I would love to do. Yeah, and it, it took uh, 15, 20 years of just being really patient of the uncomfortableness, getting fired a couple of times, um, quitting, um, you know, and still like a, staying in life you know suicide suicide rates are high i've, I've had some I, I i idyllic thoughts myself but just like <clears throat> one more day one more day let's just get up we'll try it again uh and uh it's great that I, i've just there's a miracle in every mess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then if it's still messy the miracle hasn't happened and that's some one of my little mantras that i tell myself and just like in just one day at a time and um so <clears throat> Thanks for letting me share. So my next question is, are you happy and content while you are doing this work? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, uh, we all have a choice of what emotion, uh, what are our thoughts, what are the, our emotions, right? It, it's a choice. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully that th this is more in alignment and just comes naturally. Yeah, this is where I, I think I love to do this and I feel that I love to do this. And then- okay. um, and then I just get up and I do it and I, I'm, I'm dancing my way through the work day and, and it's effortless. Um, I'm energized despite it being difficult and then I'm helping other people and then they feel energized. It doesn't always have to be that way, but um, yeah, more so than not. So what happens when somebody tells you that not you are not working professionally or you are far away from your profession or what you should actually do professionally was people think that is the profession. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Um, fortunately, I think that there's so many different modalities of chaplaincy um, and, uh, and and how this field is evolving. It's starting to look different and different every day. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, is professional the way that I talk? Is professional the way that I look? Is professional the way that I just get to work exactly at nine o'clock and then I leave at five and then I only take mm -hmm. a half an hour of lunch and that's really professional? Mm -hmm. Um. Or I go into an office and that's professional. Or now that I work, people are working from home and then like that's now what professional looks like. So I, I'm glad that this term is just kind of being loosely massaged. So I want to know how you would like yourself to be, um, how should I frame this word? I would like to know how you would like to be called professionally, but also following the desired passion you are following right now. Like what is your term for that? And how you can then describe these things, what you feel to others in a very constructive, polite and sophisticated way so that they also understand where you are coming from and how comfortable you are here after getting to what you want to do after 20, 15, 20, whatever years. Because finally you are on the path of reaching your destination, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think the way that we started this uh, little session and, and it's like, I am, what are you? A lot of people tend to answer, I am Carl. 
Like, no, that's not, that's my name. Yes. It's not who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I just, I'm a loving, conscious, trying to be in the present moment person. Like Beautiful. that's who I am. And somewhere, hopefully in, in there that there's a little professional in there, but definitely a lot of authentic and like, <clears throat> that's my true self and that's who I am. And that's, I, hopefully then that, that's what I get paid for. Yeah. And this is so great because you are embracing all part of your personality with true authenticity, which not most of the people are able to do. So be proud of yourself. I am proud of you. Yeah. It takes courage to present yourself in the way you are presenting in front of all of us where we are meeting for the first time. Isn't that so brave? And don't you think it's such a proud moment? At least I feel like I am having goosebumps for you. <laughs> Yeah, I almost feel like Carl is probably thinking like <laughs> for his clientele or the folks that he is ministering with from his chaplain. Yeah. Like if if anybody were to like it sounds like you've gone through this journey and you've come yeah. to a place where, you know, you you've been able to guide your path, your personality, your um, your career. Um, to a place that matches what your soul desire is, which is which is great. And so if others come and they're like, I don't know who I am, I feel like people are telling me that I need to be professional or if I, and then then you have this life experience where you can say, you know, heck with that. To me, it's almost like professional is no longer defining how a person should look or behave. It's more sure. of like, are you reliable? Are you dependable? Do you get your job done? You know, those are the, the things that define professional. But as far as other traits, it's kind of like, are you personable? And personable mm. to, me, to me means authentic to yourself. And so I think that as long as you can kind of bring your whole self to everything that you do, then that to me is a better way of life than thinking about compartmentalizing myself into my personal and professional. Like that's why I, I kind of think like personal, personable, and professional are like three different things. Um, personable, I think is a, is a better way to describe how we wish to be um, you know, at all times, at any time in our life. Beautiful. That's a beautiful explanation, Jennifer. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. This is so beautiful. Yeah. So um, Anastasia, she has problem with public speaking, right? So um, how would you like to be? Mm. Hi, thanks for asking, Tanua. I would like to not have my heart racing when I'm about to present my workshop. Mm -hmm. or speak in front of a group of people otherwise for example mm -hmm. this group of six lovely individuals mm -hmm. including myself and my heart is just I mean I understand it consciously mm -hmm. I could talk my, I could talk to myself about it but mm -hmm. the body is responding in a completely different way mm -hmm. uh, where it's sweaty hands and, and, um, and the heart is uh, pumping faster than it should be and so yeah, the way I would like to be is just being cool as a cucumber in the body <laughs> and in the mind. So I could okay. speak um, eloquently enough to carry my message. So I have two questions for you. First, mm -hmm. since when you figured out that you are having fear of public speaking? Mm, I think since um, school, like middle school years. Okay. I know it's been some is time. If only if you are comfortable sharing. Any incident happened on stage or something? Uh, there are some incidents, yes. Mm. Okay, we will not go into There's that. multiples, there's just not a particular one. Yes, yes. Okay, no worries. See, so what happens if your thought and your belief is not aligned thoughtfully with the conscious mind, you will say that, yes, I'm going to do this. This is not going to affect me or I'm not letting that affect me in a way where I'm feeling like my hands are sweating and I'm feeling so heat within my body. I'm not able to speak and I'm feeling so conscious and nervous, right? But when your body has gone through certain pattern where you have felt certain thing, obviously, even if your brain will say, I'm not going to get panic, your body will say, no, 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 this is new. I'm not going to do that. Right. Are you getting my point? Absolutely. So to align those things, you have to first believe. When you have the firm belief in yourself, when you have the exact 
assurance for yourself that yes, I'm 100% comfortable in speaking publicly, then your body will also start supporting you the mm -hmm. way your brain wants to be supported. Does it make any sense? Yes, but how do we begin to believe? Okay. I, I mean, I could read all the books. This is where, this is where the affirmations comes. Mm -hmm. For some people, affirmations are just sentences. But for some people, it works as a miracle. How? For example, let me ask you, how do you want to be when it comes in terms of public speaking? I'd like to be an excellent public speaker, sharing okay. uh, my message clearly, concisely, mm -hmm. um, attracting more clients through um, my workshops. Okay. So let me frame some sentences for you. And tell me how your body is feeling after you read them. Just give me a second. Okay. I'd also like to ask while Tanya is pulling that up, have you ever done like a Toastmasters or those oh. sorts of things? I thought about it. In fact, I'm looking for, there's a, quite a few in San Jose area. Mm -hmm. so I'm deciding I, I should check it out and really uh, yeah. utilize because it seems like it's a wonderful resource, isn't it? Absolutely. And I mean, the fear of public speaking is so common. I don't know of two right. people that so... love doing it, you know? And so a, a lot of times it's rehearsing and, you know, getting some tips from communication experts that will allow you to do things in a place where there's okay. low, you know, nothing to lose as, you know, it's a very kind of safe place to learn. So I have shared only one affirmation for now. That's what I wrote right now, according to you, right? Just read this and see if you're feeling something. Do you want me to read it out, out loud or to myself? To my to, just to yourself in your head. Ah, okay. I just want to know if you are able to align with this or not, because your body will say, "Yeah, this is comfortable. I would love to do that." Yes. Yes. It, it, yes. Yes. Yeah. There's Start no with this. There's no. How are you feeling when you are saying this to yourself? Does it make sense to you? Yes, it does make sense. It does. All right. So your homework is, I, I say it homework because with my clients, I tell them like this. So what I would suggest is, if you would like to do this. Uh, affirmation and you really feel resonated with this affirmation please copy and paste it and start doing this affirmation and slowly and gradually you will see whatever blocks you are holding within yourself that will start diminishing that okay. will start dissolving itself why because your brain is courageous enough but your body is saying oh mm -hmm. my god it's something new and Anything which is new is un anything which is unknown is a fear and known is a pleasure, right? Right. So this affirmation is going to make you a little bit comfortable with whatever public speaking you want to do. I would recommend it for next 21 days. Do this affirmation just before you go to the bed 21 times. If you can write it, it's beautiful. If you can record it and just, you know, keep listening to it or as a loop that, okay, I'm going to listen to it like a broken record. That will be great. Right, just before you go to the bed, just after you wake up in the morning, first thing first, right. because these are the two times when your brave, your brave, uh, sorry, brain, brain wave length is very much active and receptive to the suggestions which you want to give to yourself. Right, and in between, whole day, if you want to do something again, just do it. Most of the time, I say this three times a day, but if you're not able to do in whole day at least you just do it before going to the bed and after you wake up which is very 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 important and you yourself i am sure within a week you will see some kind of shift within yourself and i can actually see you smiling because this resonates with you it does because um this is something i would give a client of mine as a homework so it's really nice oh my god <laughs> that's why give a homework so yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Welcome. i actually welcome. yeah i actually have a couple of other uh tricks or tips too not yes, that you have to follow this or anything but I actually have a tattoo on my wrist oh. which says brave 
Wow. And so it's a I mean, it's tattooed on my wrist. It's a constant reminder that I am brave. I mean, and, and so whether or not you put a little sign, it's not like you have to put a tattoo on you, but yes. like a, something right where your desk is or something like, you know, just, or even like on a water bottle, a lot of people talk about the energy of what you're drinking, kind of going yes. into right. the water. Right. The cellular. Yeah. So on the water bottle. Even on the phone screen, you can put something which you love, you know? Yeah. The other thing that think I think. Yeah, the other thing that I do is I think about my higher self and mm. what the higher self looks like and always bringing your higher self with you so that if you're public speaking or if you're giving a presentation or if you're doing anything for, for work that you've got, that it's not just you, you're bringing like an army with you. You're bringing your higher self with you. Positive vibes only. Yay. <laughs> so, beautiful. Such good so yeah yeah it's like hey yeah. I, I got this because I've got you know I've got right. you know, it's not just me speaking so this is the way where you can actually rewire whatever is bothering you I just took this demo of Anastasia because I felt like this is the like most burning thing right now like the emotion was on surface so I was able to address that and uh, this is how we frame our own affirmations as well so there are two three sentences which I generally use for my clients is I allow myself because sometimes when we are not in acceptance of what it is we need permission from ourselves itself mm -hmm. to make that thing happen that okay uh, I'm and second thing is first thing is I allow myself second thing is I give myself permission to be expressive enough mm -hmm. to speak in public you know congratulate you Anisha. I mean you're leaning into your discomfort zone which is really cool yeah. I and mean, if you and haven't is, really liked doing this since middle school and you're like I'm gonna public speak that's pretty awesome and this is like an indirect suggestion to your own subconscious mind who is very uncomfortable that oh I don't want to do it but what you're doing is very slowly and gradually just like you talk to a child you make them understand okay that's you're going amazing. to go do it I know you got this I know you can do this right same thing we are doing to ourselves Mm -hmm. that we are allowing ourselves we are giving us permission the third uh, the third word which i generally use for my affirmations or giving people is i intend and invite mm. so, so what whatever you intend and invite what was the second one so i allow and the second one is i i, I, I give myself permission oh, i give myself i give myself permission okay sorry and i'll okay. write it down mm -hmm. so, uh, I also wanted to do a time check because I, I want to, um, I know that we're um, expected to stop at six. Does anybody, is everybody okay with staying a little bit longer? Because I would love for Jason and Ashandra to also have uh, yeah. an opportunity to perhaps get some nuggets of wisdom while we're here. Are you guys <laughs> sure. I'm hopeful, I'm, I'm believing that it's helpful for everybody to talk through these experiences. Thank you. That's awesome. Beautiful. So yeah, um, anything else, um, Jason, Ashandra, if you guys want to ask that for reminded, anything. Sorry for getting up to get my phone. There was a, in, I guess it could be turned into an affirmation. There was an end of a, something I was reading that I did a screenshot of about confidence and nervousness. And it says, remember the objective isn't to remove the butterflies in your stomach, but to train them to move in formation. So I think that's very um, transformation. <laughs> yeah, this is what we are doing. We are we are actually talking to our nervousness. You know what? It's okay to feel nervous. Mm -hmm. It's okay to feel anxious. It's okay to feel, oh my God, how am I going to do that, right? But if we train ourselves in a way where we are talking to ourselves just like a child. Oh, sorry. And we are being very supportive to ourselves. Half of the issues will go itself. Half of the issues most of the issues are gone by because we are so kind and supportive and compassionate to ourselves irrespective of all the other people whatever they are saying or telling us to be does that make any sense because imagine imagine a world where everybody else, everybody is pointing some or the other things from you like you don't do this you don't do yeah this this this, this. but and on that you also start behaving the same way how will you feel you'll not feel good right so why not change ourselves I mean, why not change our own perspective for ourselves and start embracing all the parts of our personality? Will that help? At least you will be happy. <laughs> That's how I feel. Let me ask a question. But, so along those lines, um, what do you recommend for 
I guess, consistency. Because I think in certain settings, like maybe like a smaller group or a specific um, specific people that we're used to interacting with, I think it's it comes with ease, and then you kind of shift some of those dynamics, and then the the physical nervousness or anxiety or whatever it is mm-hmm. seems to um, seems to come up where you might be confident because you know I've talked to I've done a preliminary had a preliminary conversation with so and so over here so I know mm-hmm. what I want to say but then the setting is different so it kind of throws mm-hmm. you off if that makes sense yeah definitely it does make sense so first of all you need to understand what makes you comfortable what makes you completely with ease with yourself how would you like to take ahead this conversation or the relationship whatever it is because it's all about you it's not about them it's all about you how would you pursue things further how would you like to talk and be in the position where you are not feeling nervous there is no anxiety there is no scared there is no awkward energies do you know what i say do you understand what i'm trying to say here so i would like to know first how would you like to be there and then the the affirmations which the sentences i have written that i allow myself i give myself permission i intend and invite all these can be added to the set of sentence which you want for yourself and i can do it for you if you give me an example just like uh, uh carl did and uh anastasia did i can do that um i guess professionally well yeah i guess professionally so work if i'm um leading a team meeting and again these are people that i have great conversations with individually and as a group no issues um if it's a committee meeting again you have some history of interaction so that's mm-hmm. a little less comfortable per se um mm-hmm. and then versus like a larger management meeting where there's a mix of people either you've never spoken to or um you've may, you may have spoken to in the past but there's no um there's not like a consistent rapport with them if that makes mm. sense yeah so definitely like that's why i'm body, asking you your body, your presentation to the ceo <laughs> yeah <laughs> a little different so that's why that's why i'm asking you that what is your feeling what is your thought around that because that's when i'm going to grab the thing and then i will be able to suggest something how do you want to be like like as uh, anastasia told me that she wants to be courageous she wants to be very you know brave what do you want to be in that scenario i want to be fearless and consistent um and i guess just come away authentic and confident consistent fearless consistent authentic and what else uh confident confident okay so i think there will be two affirmations which i can feel for you will be good all right let me let me pour some magic here this also reminds me of a study that was done about um i want to say it was olympic athletes who um there there was a certain set of athletes that um practiced a certain amount of time and then when they got to their competition that they didn't do as well as they typically did in their normal practices and then others who actually did even better and started breaking records and a lot of it had to do with the amount of practice that they put in right beforehand like those that felt like oh i can just like you know eat breeze through it and i'm just going to you know do it but the ones that really felt like the nervousness energized them and then took them to a next level sometimes you've probably seen that you see performances where it's like the person was like you know completely like a spiritual experience it's like an out of body experience sometimes mm-hmm. nervousness can do that when it's met with enough preparation and so it is like the the idea of pressure is not a bad thing it's actually you know a good thing it it, it could perpetuate you to perform better than you've ever done before so you do want to strive for just enough 
rehearsal time, like you know your shit, you know your facts, you know it so well, you know it cold, all of those things that, you know, come easily for you when you're in a, in a, um, like a safe environment with a, with just your team members or a committee. But then when you get in front of the CEO or you get in front of that bigger management meeting that you really shine and that you can bring your whole personality there. So yeah, it's part of that. It has to do with the rehearsing. And then part of it also has to do with the fact that our mindset gets in the way and says, oh my God, I could be fired. Oh my God, what is the CEO going to think of me? Or what is everybody that's like got these big ass titles? And, and so we, we mentally, that's the whole thing, transform your mind, transform your life. It's like we mentally put barriers up that say, oh, this is making me constrict. This is making me intimidated. This is making me feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And so getting over that with these affirmations, which Tenu is going to help you uh, with, to get a, a little bit over that hurdle of thinking, you know what, these are these are very, like, sometimes I'll think to myself, you know what, these people aren't going to care what I say anyway, they're, they just want to get back to, you know, thinking about what they're going to do on the weekends or what have you. And so if you, if you kind of think about ways to change and shift the mindset of the, of the audience that's in front of you, that they're human, just like you are, that, you know, they, they, they are so, they're going to be so happy to hear what you have to say, because you know your stuff so well. And this could be the greatest opportunity that you've had to get a promotion, like all of those good things, you know, thinking about it and spinning it in a way that's hard to when you're, you know, you're used to feeling a certain way, but, um, you know, just getting yourself in the rhythm of, affirmations, little by little, practicing, rehearsing, step by step, all of those things that have, you've been like, man, I've had this wealth of experience behind me. I know my stuff. I, I know that my team is there with me. I'm bringing my higher self with me too. Um, all of those things can, can certainly help you to solidify that belief in yourself and that can empower you rather than disempower you when you're, you know, getting in front of those opportunities. Yeah, and you know, think of something else. Um, whatever it was, I think it was like 2020, my godfather passed. Um, and my mom, my dad was kind of expected to speak because, you know, they were close friends and such. Um, my mom was in a different state. So she kind of nudged me to, and saying, you're probably expected to speak. Um, so it was in front of an entire church full of people. I didn't know. I spent probably like a week and a half, like writing and rewriting and kind of practicing. And when I tell you like not stomach was doing all of this the whole time. Um, and then I got out and my dad said, my mom is like a prolific public speaker. And I am not. Um, he said, you sounded, you sounded just like your mom. And then, you know, I, I got done. I focused on um, my God sisters were in the, in the front two rows. So I kind of, I spoke out, but I focused on who is my message going towards. Yeah. Um, and people came to me like in the bathroom and then afterwards, you know, at the at the repast part and oh, that was so, you know, so great and stuff like that. And I have not had that momentum. So I think it's maybe focusing on one or two people versus the whole group. And I haven't really thought about mm. what made that different from like some of Beautiful. my speaking opportunities. This is actually really interesting that uh, it's yeah. an interesting reveal. I think that you've just like identified, hey, you know, these are the steps that got me to this place where I just nailed it. And yeah. I was speaking to the children. And I was terrified that it, it's still, but the delivery didn't, and I had, you know, notes. So maybe that's another, another yeah. piece of it is kind of think ahead of time of, whatever the setting is and yeah. think about what's the, what are the important, the important points that I want to. Yeah. This is a breakthrough moment. Like you are coming in the awareness of what it is and what you need to do. And this is beautiful. This is and beautiful. Also, yeah. And also like a lot of the memorization tactics, because um, these days we're not made to memorize Google helps us to not have to memorize too many facts anymore but sometimes you have to you're you're like shit I don't have my phone with me I can't Google this but yeah. it's like coming up with those acronyms that can help you remember certain points that you want to make is kind of like a little cheat 
I know that like Brene Brown uses breathing and, you know, because it's like, uh, you know, she'll say, oh, it's about being, you know, believing it's about, you know, ours reliability. And, and so it's easier to remember the, the points if you can like, and sometimes people will use numbers, but, but um, sometimes if you can come up with like a, a word or a, like a, an acronym um, mm -hmm. to help you get through those points, it helps with you to memorize the points that you want to make. True. That's true. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, so, uh, Ashandra, I've given you three affirmations. I don't know which one is more resonating to you, but if you can read it and tell me if any of these three are making any sense to you and which you would like to uh, go ahead with because you feel better about them. So, just let me know. Um, all, all three, and definitely number one, as I'm um, going through coaching and doing more um, self development. Beautiful. Work. My, so? my self permission to kind of um, trust that how I am. I think that's that's another thing I'm struggling with. Um, mm. Giving myself permission to trust that my natural inclination of how to approach situations is going to rise to the occasion and and can be adjusted and refined. Mm. Um, example: Like I'm I'm um, an analytical creative. Um, but my nine to five is I'm an analyst. So I mm. try to use, so infusing like creativity into yeah. that can be difficult and I've had to, you know, some workarounds. So I have to kind of, um, instead of like having that balance, I kind of have to maneuver my brain more towards the analytical, but I know I'm not operating in my highest state because I don't have that merging of the two. That's okay. So if you feel um, if you feel comfortable with all of these three, I would recommend mm -hmm. do it. Right? Again, same thing as I told uh, Anastasia that before going to the bed, after you wake up, twenty one times for next twenty one days. Okay. Right? And see, guys, I just want to say this is just a start. You know, this is just the first step towards the transformation of whatever you need to do. Right? You have to be consistent. You have to keep listening to yourself. You have to keep sitting with yourself and understanding what do you need from yourself, which is very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. The moment you come in awareness of what you need from yourself, you will start shifting then and there itself. The major shift starts happening when your brain understands that, okay, this is not serving me anymore. So when this is not serving me anymore, what would I want to apply or implement or change which start making sense to me and which start serving me as well does it make any sense because it's all in head the moment you start working on your thoughts everything changes everything changes like i used to feel that you know what i'm not beautiful and when i came into the path of healing and hypnotherapy and all those things I did not only start feeling beautifully inside, but from outside. And people started noticing, oh my, Tanu, you look so beautiful. What are you doing these days? And all I was doing was my inner work, which I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And I started developing that confidence that yes, I am beautiful no matter what. And people started looking at my beauty as well. So it's all about inside. The journey towards inwards begin from the affirmations first step is your thoughts the moment you start affirming things which you are resonating with again not all the affirmation will work for you the affirmation which makes you feel something in your body which make you just like Anastasia she was smiling why because the resonance is there the connection is there with the affirmation yes this is going to work that's when it start happening right so this is for you and uh, is anyone left? I think Jason, Carl, do you also want some affirmation for you? You okay? Good. <laughs> Jason, what about you? Mm, I think I'd like an affirmation for kind of like honing in on your authentic self, like whether that okay. is like being a kid or, uh, you know, being too much or different. Like, I think that comes up sometimes in my like personal relationships, romantic relationships, and just mm -hmm. being okay with like, if somebody is like 
you know, not on my page or isn't interested and yeah, being like completely cool and okay with that. So I have a few questions to ask. Uh, are you okay with yourself feeling like a kid? Yeah, on my own, I am. Yeah. You are? When right? people, sometimes when less people are watching, maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was cute. Um, and why do you want to change? Uh, maybe to... Uh, sometimes like the results aren't often like I, I lose patience I guess with some of the results I'd want like you know like a girlfriend or like to be uh, you know uh, thought of as like professional as well like in in my like endeavors so like you know I, I'm seeing some growth but sometimes I'm like ah, oh, it's not quite what I want uh, so okay. that's kind of what comes up yeah. Okay, so next question is, how much do you love and accept yourself on the scale of zero to 10? Mm, uh, seven, maybe, okay, six, maybe six to seven. <laughs> okay, six, gone down. <laughs> okay, no worries. All right, so you want a mix and match of where you can be yourself and people can accept you as yourself do you actually want to change? Because believe me, will you be comfortable changing yourself as not who you are too? It would be a lot harder uh, to right? change myself. So yeah. why not? Why not intend and invite people around you who love you and accept you as who you are and what you are? What about that? That sounds much more relaxing, yeah. Right? There is no stress. There is no tension of, oh my God, I have to change. Oh my God, I have to make this shift. Oh my God, people are not liking me. It's okay. You like yourself. You love yourself. That's all that matters. Yeah, I think speaking up is probably a really good way of getting there, you know. Right. Uh, also, speaking up in a way where you are firm and assertive, sophisticated and constructive. So that people take you seriously. See, having a, a personality or having some characteristics of being a childlike or kiddish, that makes you alive. That puts you in a different, unique way. You know, you're different from others because you're unique in your own way. Everybody is unique in their own way, right? So why don't you embrace that, that uniqueness? Yeah. Um... How does that make you feel? When you feel, when you somebody asking you to, embrace yourself and your uniqueness and your childlike behavior you know I, I I absolutely like stand out like you know um it allows me to it could draw attention my way but uh you know uh I feel like a strong whether it's being cathartic or just like you know embracing self-love like I do truly appreciate like being the only one who's curious about this subject or like talking about personal development so it's mm -hmm. uh there are a lot of positive trade-offs it's just like maybe the maybe the reaction or I'm not going to receive a particular validation that I want but knowing it's all you know generated within uh and I'm like wow I really actually liked uh being this kind of person or like going to a dance class and not knowing any moves like you know it's it's fun to really bring out my curiosity or or childness of being just uh, driven to explore that those options. I have to say, Jason, right. you do joy and just, I guess the word is exuberance. Like I would not want to lose <laughs> that. I mean, that is some, that is a gift. Like some people will go their I whole know. lives and be so boring and not curious. Like I would never, I mean, I would never say like change any of that. Like the curiosity, yeah, I mean, especially is like, that's, that's, that's what, golden and so I'm it might surprised. be a matter of surrounding yourself with the right people oh yeah maybe that's the, <laughs> might be, might just keep surrounding that's yourself true that's true just, just look at the um look at the affirmation which i sent you and tell yeah. me if if this is something which you would love to do or should i change uh, it again yeah because for me word. if i if you ask me i, I would love to see jason mm. as who he is because yeah. that's his quality I mean, we're all evolving and we're all becoming. And so there are probably perhaps certain elements and traits of, of 
you know, being the child that maybe, you know, ends up being, uh, you know, dissolved or dissipated over time. And that's fine. You know, it's like, th there's no character flaws in any of us here, you know, thinking about was at the beginning, you were trying to seek validation. Mm -hmm. And so that to me was like, oh, there's something unsettled, or there's something in you that still needs filling like there's a hole there and so there is perhaps something that might be missing that that you want yeah. to have like a stronger belief in yourself on so that you aren't seeking validation as much as you feel that you need to or acceptance we want people to like you um and so yeah there's there's probably a little bit more work around that and you know the, some of these affirmations can certainly help but um you know we can certainly explore that probably in future sessions too mm -hmm. um yeah so the I'll unconditional you... love is my favorite part of it because it's like right? oh sometimes i've been looking out in like partners or my parents for that and it's like mm -hmm. oh they're never going to be able to really supply as much as i need because it can i want it constant you know yeah okay so when you say that they are never going to supply that, right? Mm -hmm. Do you hear what you're saying? You are using the word never. Oh, okay. And that's never going to be uh, up to your mark of, okay, this is what I need. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. so this is the awareness where you have to catch your thought. Okay, this is what I said to myself. You know, just, just hold, just take a pause. What did you say to yourself? Mm -hmm. Because whatever you are telling yourself is also a kind of affirmation which you are doing it unconsciously unknowingly does it make sense yeah it's like manifestation is so important but it could be the exactly. worst things and then those exactly. are still like you know traits and all that mm -hmm. thoughts emotions feelings and energies mm. energies manifestation yeah any questions so like, far i'm just writing down the uh, affirmations into my yeah, journal. you can just yeah. copy paste it okay. <laughs> that's what i do i just copy paste <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciated that and um, how I need to remove particular words out of my vocab like you did. That's there. okay. Oh. Again, don't, please, please. Guys, I really want you to have a one thing in your mind always. Please never beat up yourself. Mm -hmm. And for this, I can use the word never because <clears throat> never ever love yourself. It's okay to do mistakes. It's okay to make some errors. It's okay to yell at somebody it's okay to be mad it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to do whatever you have done but it is also okay to accept that though that okay i have done that is in the past now and now i'm in the present and i know from now onwards i decide to what my future should be or how it should be isn't it because we are human we are not animals right we have we are human we have brain we have the capacity to think, we have the capacity to change, we have the capacity to adapt. Is it? So why not take this privilege? These are the benefits of being human, isn't it? So let's do that. Yes, I'll just quickly sum up because there are two more things which I want to um, um, share with you guys. How to be aware of your thoughts, which I just mentioned with Jason, right? Being in awareness, is the only key to have your thoughts in your aligned state, right? I would not say in control because I feel control is a little so-so word, not like a little negative word for me. So how to have your thoughts in your alignment? First, being in awareness. How to be in awareness? By being in the present moment, here and now. When you are in the present moment, you are able to catch what you are telling to yourself, what you're telling to others and what others are also telling to you. If I was not in the present moment, I would have completely ignored what Jason has said. Isn't it? But I'm 100% focused on each and every word of the person saying. This also enhances the memory. It helps you to remember things because if you are not 100% present in the moment, your mind is somewhere else, physically you are present. You will not remember whatever has happened in the session. But if you are fully present, you will be like, oh, this was this, this was this, this was this, this. Isn't it? So being in the present moment is very, very important. Now, how to be in the present moment? By watching your breath. Our breath tell you 
how you are feeling. You must have noticed when you are agitated, you are irritated, uh, you are not aligned in alignment with somebody's thoughts or things. You feel like, oh my God, this is so uneasy. This is so uncomfortable. Why? Because And your breath also changes, isn't it? But when you are calm, when you are content, when you are peaceful, your breath is completely calm. For, for example, right now your breath is very calm. Why? Because you are doing something which you like to do. You are here to learn something. You are here to grow, right? You are focusing, investing your time on your self-development. That's why you guys are here, isn't it? So, watching your breath is very, very important. Focus. Whenever you feel that, okay, something is off, just focus on your breath. It will come in time. It will take at least a week for you guys to at least have the taste of how it feels like to be in the present moment and watching your breath. Some people will watch their breath. There will be thousands of thoughts coming, but you have to be an observer. Thoughts are thoughts. Let them come. Let them go. You just watch them as an observer. Here the Buddhist philosophy comes, where you are attached in a detached manner. So detaching yourself from the emotion is also very important. That's how you become mindful of yourself and be in awareness. Right? This is the most simple, simple, simple thing. Other thing is doing meditation. Med if you are meditating, I, I would recommend like if you guys are beginners and you have not done meditation, you have not experienced it, I would say just start with three minutes. Then go for five minutes, like for one week, just two, three minutes meditation. You just have to close your eyes, focus on your breath. If you want, you can do some guided meditation. There are thousands of YouTube uh, meditations. You can choose to do that. Because you will feel that when you are meditating, you are allowing yourself to feel whatever is coming. For me, if, if I tell you my example, when I started meditating at the first time to, in 2017, 18, I used to cry. Why? Because thoughts were coming. And if the thoughts are good, very good. If the thoughts are negative, you feel certain emotion, but you don't hold yourself. You just release it. The more you release, the lighter you feel. The lighter you feel, the productive you become. The productive you become, there you go. You are able to perform. Everything's, everything is connected. Everything is connected. So these are small, small tips which I'm giving you which hopefully if you guys want to do, you can do. And uh, if you want to see the positive shifts, definitely try these things and you will actually do this. And then give us the feedback. When you come for our next session, just let us know how did you feel? What are the changes you are seeing for yourself? Again, for seeing the changes also, you will have to be aware enough to watch. Okay, so this happened in the past and that, that is the action we took. But right now my action has changed. That is a shift. Because you don't respond in the same pattern. Your response changes. Your action changes. Everything starts evolving. And then you start feeling, oh my God, I'm actually feeling a little lighter. Those things are not bothering me as they used to bother me in the past. Why? Because you have taken the charge and you are not giving your remote control to anybody else. Because the remote control is in you and is with you. So if you want to turn on the TV, you can turn on the TV and watch whatever you want. It's better than giving somebody else the remote of your life, right? And let them take the charge of channels of HBO and Netflix and what whatnot, isn't it? All right. Uh, so uh, again, uh, the second part is I already mentioned that the awareness will bring us closer to change of response and options. And you will feel, oh my God, how beautifully I'm evolving. You will start loving yourself, which is the best thing in the world because everything starts from you and ends at you nothing else matters isn't it all right how are we guys feeling I want to thank you so much, Tenu. Thank you, everybody, for being with us. I know we went long, and I, um, I'm grateful that you guys all hung in there. I appreciate everybody very, very much. And please, uh, if you uh, got anything out of this, please uh, continue to tell your friends, tell those that you know about us, because we are a small community and we grow by word of mouth. Um, with that, we just wish you all blessings and have a great night. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Good night.
Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Beautiful sharing. Thank you so much, Tanu and Jan. Thanks for hosting. Really enjoyed this. You're welcome. You're welcome. Enjoyed Thank having you, so you Anastasia. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.